The first American astronauts to travel on a commercially built craft have arrived on board the International Space Station. The two crew members were welcomed by a fellow NASA astronaut and by two Russian cosmonauts. The docking was the first by a US spacecraft carrying crew members in nearly a decade. The SpaceX rocket blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida yesterday. It marks the start of a new era in which NASA will buy space transport services from the commercial sector. The two crew members, Doug Hurley and Bob Benken, were welcomed by a fellow astronaut and uh, he, Mr. Benken spoke after his arrival to say it was good to be part of a new era of U.S. space exploration. It's uh, obviously been our honor to be just a small part of this. Uh, we have to give credit to SpaceX, the commercial crew program, and of course NASA. It's great to get the United States back in the uh, crewed launch business and uh, we're just really glad to be on board this uh, magnificent complex. You saw the press conference now. I now want to rewind a bit to show you this moment where the two incoming astronauts came through, the docking was successful, and there they are embracing with their American colleague and with two Russian cosmonauts. The docking was successful. I'm joined now by Garrett Reisman, a former NASA astronaut who has himself been to the International Space Station and later served as Director of Space Operations at SpaceX. Uh, Garrett Reisman, uh, it is of course an amazing and a very successful achievement, but doesn't it simply get America back to where it was in 2011 when it routinely took astronauts to the space station without having to hitch rides from Russia? Well, yes and no. It's true that uh, you know we're we're back now, and we had this nine-year gap where we were hitching rides with the Russians. But it's more than just that, because the difference is this vehicle, the Dragon and the Falcon 9 rocket, are not owned by NASA. They're owned by a private company, and that private company, SpaceX, can now go and use those vehicles for other missions. So, in addition to having the United States have the capability once again to send our astronauts on our own vehicles to the space station, it also opens up the possibility of a golden new age of commercial spaceflight and ordinary citizens getting a chance to fly in space. Does this mean that a private company can decide to go all the way to the moon if it wants? Would it have to ask permission from any other country to do this? Uh, no, in fact, SpaceX intends to do just that. We've signed a deal uh, with a, a client to, to take uh, ordinary citizens, uh, very well healed, I should say, <laughs> ordinary citizens, not so ordinary, <laughs> right. uh, around, the, around the moon uh, and around do exactly that. So. When you say very well healed, how well healed? How much would it cost you or me uh, to take a trip around, uh, around the moon? Well, if you're interested, I could uh, connect you with the <laughs> operators that are standing by. But no, it, it's, uh, we're talking uh, orbital uh, flight, so going, actually spending time up in space and orbiting around the Earth, we're talking tens of millions of dollars. To the moon, we're talking an order of magnitude uh, greater than that. But if you just want to go up and have some experience of weightlessness and see the curvature of the Earth and the view of the Earth for a few moments in a suborbital flight, there's companies right now, uh, Virgin Galactic and also Blue Origin, that are spooling up to do just that on the order of a couple hundred thousand. So right. it depends. Uh, there, there are different price points. Right. I'm probably looking something closer to Earth. Uh, what is the next achievable aim then for NASA? Well, NASA, first of all, has got one more vehicle that will make its maiden flight, and that's the Boeing vehicle. There were two companies selected for the commercial crew program. SpaceX is the first out of the gate, but there'll be another one. And then uh, in the long term, NASA is working on what they call the Artemis program, which is a return uh, to the moon and the potential capability to go further than that. That's a very large program with a lot of challenges associated with it. But that's what NASA is hoping to accomplish. Uh, you've been on the International Space Station where your colleagues now are. What will they be doing and how long for? Well, they're going to be staying up there for a while. We don't know exactly how long, actually, because there's competing interests. On one hand, they want Bob and Doug up there to, to do work. Uh, up until they arrived this morning, uh, they, they, they had just one American crew member on board, and so they were a little shorthanded. They now create the ability to get more of the manifest or the more of the schedule complete, uh, and they want to keep them there to get that productivity. But on the other hand, until Dragon comes back with Bob and Doug and splashes down and we get the data and analyze it, we can't say the certification process is done until this test flight is complete. So that, uh, you know, they want to get that done before the next scheduled mission. So I think we're talking sometime in the end of the summer they'll come back. Carrot Reisman, thank you so much. Thanks. And I just want to say this is a, a rough time over here, and I'm glad that just at least one thing uh, went right. Uh, we, we take that on board and we appreciate those words.